It will be Watford tomorrow at the London Stadium. It's an opportunity, as I always say, but particularly now after the past couple of results and performances for West Ham to to get back to winning ways. And on the outset, it looks like very much a game that West Ham can go and win. I expect West Ham to win. I think we're favourites, but I don't think it's wise going into a fixture like this against the Roy Hodgson team, expecting to breeze them over. I think that 4-4-2, as I've mentioned in the title, is cause for concern. And I think West Ham this season, we've been troubled with the low block. How how can we break it down? How can we be more aggressive in breaking it down? And I think this is a game for David Moyes to implement that. And it's, of course, on the players as well. It isn't just tactically. I think personnel-wise, I think West Ham need to, to get in the half spaces, play between the lines a lot more, create space for ourselves. I think sometimes it's too easy to play horizontally and try and play around teams and, and force Watford out of shape. I think Watford will come to London Stadium tomorrow fully prepped and ready to sit a lot deeper and use the likes of Pedro and, and Josh King to present an attack on the, on the counter-attack. And I think that's where their biggest threat will lie. And it's for them, their opportunity is West Ham lacking balance in defending against their transition. So talk about West Ham's team. I think it speaks for itself because of the selections on Saturday in some instances. I think the goalkeeping situation, I imagine Fabianski will come in. Ariola had a mistake in him there. And of course, he had another mistake in that game. And I think that will lean more towards David Moyes picking him. I don't want to get into the discussion about the goalkeeper situations. We all have our opinions on, on what both goalkeepers bring. But just from a team perspective and probably from a managerial perspective, he'll look at Fabianski, A, as his number one stopper, and B, also the fact that he hasn't made that mistake recently and say that there's a perfect chance for him to come back into the fold. Dawson, for me, will sit next to him. We'll talk about their position in a little bit later on. Cress on the left. And I think Soufal on the right. Now, this is also contentious, or at least a, a point of debate, that before, obviously, Soufal was dropped, I say dropped hesitantly. Of course, he was let off in the FA Cup and Johnson came in. There was the argument that, that Soufal was struggling for form and I would agree on the ball. He wasn't as composed as I would like him to be. He looked threatened at times. And, and Johnson, I remember when he was taken out of the team, people were concerned about the lack of end product from Johnson. And I think sometimes with Ben, it becomes a case of he plays on the left-hand side, naturally slightly weaker. It's not natural for him to, to cut in all the time and, and it affects his ability in terms of the quality of deliveries into the box. The reason why I pick Soufal, the reason why I'd like to see Soufal, at least in this game, is because I think West Ham need to get the full-backs high. We've got to stretch that compact back four. Or, equally, we've got to take advantage of the fact that Watford could give us a lot of space in those wide areas. And it is going to allow the attacking players, you look at Jared Bowen in particular down that right-hand side, to play a bit more central, to get closer to Mikel Antonio, and of course cause those Watford centre-backs real issues and cause a real threat to them in that sense. The double pivot, Rice and Suchek. And this is really where it has to be spot on from West Ham. I think sometimes in these type of games, we've seen slight vulnerabilities in terms of how to defend against the transition. And that's because Suchek and Rice have been positioned so far up the pitch. I, I think for me, the balance is deck as the six and Suchek given the license to get in the box. And that's, that's the common sense choice. But I think in this game, if Zuma doesn't play, that is paramount for Declan Rice to scan, to sit again just in front of the 18-yard box when West Ham have the ball in the final third. Of course he can do it. We know he can. He's such a fantastic football player in terms of making those runs and he can stretch play as we saw on Saturday as we've seen this season. But for me, controlling that against the team that is likely to sit deeper is important for West Ham to maintain pressure, but also to defend against their counter-attack. So that's the kind of dynamic that I really want to see in this game. I suppose you look at the attacking midfielders, the right-hand side picks itself in Jared Bowen. Lanzini has an injury, or at least has a knot. He's been in training, but I don't envisage that he's going to play in this game. So for me, I would go Ben Rama in the 10, and I'd go four nows on the left. I like what I saw from four nows. I think in this game, and like I said about the fullbacks, if West Ham push the fullbacks really high and we create width there, and four nows is allowed to come inside and link play with the likes of Ben Rama and Bowen, of course, coming off that right-hand side, then it really presents Watford real problems between those lines. And it's going to cause their centre-backs real issues. And it's going to make Watford very uncomfortable in terms of the defensive responsibilities. And Fornals has that ability. Whilst I don't think he's a player like Vlasic that will drive to the line and stretch players and, and force them out of shape, I think his intelligence in this game is crucial for West Ham. And, and it's not just down to Fornals finding the right positions and linking the right play. West Ham have got to be aggressive in playing through those lines. If we're seeing too much hesitancy to do that 
I call it bravery, but at times you've really got to take responsibility to get the ball to Fournals, to get the ball to Ben Rama, and equally in, in them in turn to go and, and drive with the ball and create space and, and really occupy the centre-backs. There's a real golden opportunity there. And you, you don't want a situation for me where Mikel Antonio is again, and we see this, and I imagine he'll come into this game because he didn't play on Saturday and he hasn't played for a while. Well, albeit not in the Premier at least. You don't want a situation where you're making it easy for Watford centre-backs. We don't want a physical aerial duel. We, we don't. And we've seen it this, this season with Mikel Antonio. Whilst he's strong, whilst he's fantastic on the half turn, you, you, you become too predictable to play off of. And then the breakdown of play causes issues and invites Watford's counter. So I do think West Ham, those attacking midfielders have really got a job tomorrow in order to, to get on the ball, to be adventurous, to be ambitious, but relinquish Antonio a bit of that duty. And I think Antonio's got a role in himself. I, I don't necessarily believe it's a case of Antonio has to be central. I think because of the position that West Ham will find themselves on the pitch, I, I don't think he necessarily needs to be between the two centre-backs. I think him being active in his movement, and again, there is a responsibility and an onus on him to take responsibility and ultimately be proactive in driving past using his his dribbling ability because he does have it and and his pace and his dynamism and dragging him out of position to create opportunities for others. And listen, where West Ham really performed superbly against Watford last time out was the fact that that front four, the movement, dragging them out of positions, stretching the play with Mikel Antonio, that's where it worked. And it created space for the likes of Jared Bowen. And I, and I think if West Ham can get that spot on, maintain the balance, maintain the pressure, we should get the result. But again, don't write Watford off. I don't think it'll be an easy game from that outset. And I, and I think if Zuma is out and Diop and Dawson have to play slightly higher, there may be vulnerabilities. Because we've seen, again, this season where West Ham have got the ball and they are playing, again, further towards the halfway line. The centre-back split. Do you, again, that invites an opportunity that if someone like a Josh King, who I believe, I don't think he's lightning quick, but I do really value his ability to be versatile, to carry the ball and to link play. He's got strength. He's got aerial qualities as well. I think if he has an opportunity to get the better of a Craig Dawson, whether it's movement in behind, whether it's dragging him out wide, and Jao Pedro, who we know is dynamic, he's quick, he's direct. Again, you're making it too much of a 2v2. And that's where we don't want to be. And that's where their goal came from last time out. So West Ham, again, it seems a simple enough task. Obviously, it's clearly not. These are Premier League teams and and very high-level players. But for me, I think Declan Rice is crucial, as he always is, but certainly in controlling the game and protecting our two centre-backs. And I think West Ham, for me, just have to be a little bit braver in terms of how we break down some of these teams. It's a test. It's a test of resolve. It's a test of persistence. But I do want West Ham to show ambition outside of uniform formulaic movement. And I think we've got the players to do that. And that is all I will say on the matter. So thank you so much for joining me for this preview. Drop a like on the video if you do enjoy this type of thing. Let me know your thoughts on the game tomorrow or today or whenever this comes out. What do you think the score is going to be? Check out the Patreon account in the description below. Check out the West Ham Way website. There is a link in there for you to delve into. And there will be loads of pre-match and post-match content around the game. I will be back. I will try and be consistent at least. After the Watford game, it will be in a hotel, so I'll have to do it from there. But I will get something out and we'll chew the fat. And fingers crossed, as I always say, three points would be fantastic. Move on, build the momentum and a game against Leicester on Sunday that, again, is, a, is an opportunity for West Ham to go and keep building on those three points. So like I say, take care and enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Enjoy the rest of your